Now my plan today was to work on some test pieces. Truth is, I'm about halfway done with doing those test pieces, but part of the point of doing test pieces is to test the procedures and your approach to what you're doing, and that means having the tools to do the job. Unfortunately, I'm falling a little bit short on a couple of tools. Specifically, I need a slitting chisel that's the right size to create the slit drift hole in the round bar that the square bar is going to pass through. As long as I'm making that tool, I'm going to take the time to make a few other tools. And all of my square drifts that I have for doing the square holes are mild steel and they're all beat up and abused and you can't drive them all the way through because the ends mushroom up so fast. So I'm going to redo these out of S7. I'm going to make the slitting chisel out of S7. Of course, wouldn't you know it, I don't have any S7 the appropriate sizes. So I went ahead and ordered that. Should be here tomorrow. In the meantime, I think I'm going to make a square monkey tool for square tenons on the end of the square bar. Well, even doing that on the lathe, I managed to get the hole a little bit off center, but I think it's going to be okay. It doesn't really matter for what this tool is. It's just going to be easier to square up the more centered that hole is. And hopefully I can turn this three quarter inch round hole into a nice half inch square hole. I think it'll be easier to work with in the long run if the entire thing is square. I don't need a round striking in and a square working in. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 to get a discount on your order. Now the hole or the slot in a monkey tool is really mostly there to get the dirt and the crud, the scale, whatever builds up in there, gives it a place to fall out. But it also serves as a place to eyeball whether your tenon is too long for the monkey tool. If you ram a tenon all the way into that and start hammering on it, you're going to upset it in the monkey tool, probably going to have to throw the piece away, start all over, make a new monkey tool because you're never getting that back out of there. At least not without more work than goes into making the monkey tool in the first place. Now this is just ever so slightly off, I think. We could be just a hair more square and a hair larger. It just almost fits a piece of half inch square bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and drift this. I hope I don't regret that. I'll use a lot of punch lube, but I'm gonna try really hard not to get the drift stuck in here. And I'll just go ahead and use that same S7 drift that I'm making for the punched holes. And luckily FedEx was just here. And that means before I can finish the monkey tool, I need to go ahead and make the drift. I've cut a piece of the half inch square bar about five inches long. Exact dimensions on a lot of this stuff doesn't matter. It's just whatever you want for tool. Some applications you're going to want longer, some shorter. That's one reason I got three drawers of various drifts in this cabinet behind me because there's always a need for something a little bit different. These all progress pretty much the same, so I think I'm just going to show making the half inch square when the other two are the same except the round one, the taper parts will get rounded up. Other than that, the procedure's the same. Oop, holding the wrong piece of steel here. This piece that's longer is going to become the slitting chisel, and this piece is going to become the drift. 
And once this is done and ready to use, then we'll finish this. On the leading edge of the drifts, I want a long, gentle taper, and this helps get it established in the hole that needs to be drifted. On the back end, I want a shorter taper, but long enough that it can be driven all the way through the hole and fall free. So I'm just going to put that in the vermiculite, let it cool slowly, then I'll do any grinding and cleanup that I need to do on it to make sure it doesn't have any sharp edges. In the meantime, I think we'll go ahead and work on the slitting chisel. I'm starting with three quarter inch square bar. I'm going to start by knocking the corners off of this and making it into an octagon. Then we'll forge the chisel in. Really a pretty simple chisel. The main thing is it gets sharpened up the sides as well as around the bottom. Putting a little flat on here and that helps grip the chisel better. It helps steer it in use so you can keep your chisel line straight. And I'll finish it off by putting a little taper in the struck end. Now I can draw out the actual chisel. As far as the size for this goes, you have to remember you're trying to create a hole that's going to be three quarter inches square when you're all done and not just a slot. Francis Whitaker has a formula for that, but he also has the sizes laid out in the blacksmith's cookbook. So I'm gonna go with the sizes of the blacksmith cookbook and just start with that. And for a three quarter inch square hole, he specifies one and 21 64s. You metric guys can figure that one out on your own. Now I am sure that you were hollering at me throughout forging this chisel you're using the wrong piece of material. Use the long piece. Well, I just made a kind of short, stubby chisel. Nothing wrong with this if your hand isn't too close to the heat, if it's a smaller piece you're working on, or if you've got a really good glove on that protects you from the heat. Personally, I prefer a longer chisel. So using the same process, I started with a piece that was eight inches long and made a better chisel. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one out. But the process is exactly the same as what you saw on this, just in a longer chisel. I think this is a little bit more comfortable and my hand will be further away from the heat. I still need to grind this one and get it finished up and it'll be ready for heat treating. I don't think I'm going to show heat treating all these tools. I'll go ahead and show this one drift because we need to get back to work on the monkey tool. And that was the whole point of stopping to make all these tools. Once this is up to heat, I go ahead and stand it up with the struck end buried either in vermiculite. In this case, I just stuck it into the coal in the coal forge. And that will cool slower so it is not as hard and brittle as the working end of the drift is. The half inch square drift is done and ready to go. I've cleaned this up a lot more than I would normally clean up a drift. These don't generally need to be polished. They're, they're going to get pretty bunged up and rough in use anyways. But for this, because I'm going to try and use it to drift this hole that I can't drive the drift clear out of, I want it to be as smooth as possible so it's easy to retract each time. I'm going to use a lot of punch lube on it.
As long as that drift's not up close to critical temperature where we hardened it initially, I'm not worried about quenching it in this liquid punch lube. Well, that was nice. That end wants to stick a lot worse, so I think this is going to be my last heat. If I have to do anything else with it, it's going to have to be with a file. Or I'm going to have to just call it good enough. That monkey tool is going to need some filing and a little bit of abrasive paper, something on the inside, just to make that not a sharp edge. You don't want a sharp edge where your tenon meets the original bar. It's a good place for a stress fracture, so you want a little bit of a radius edge there. Now, what are some other things you can do if you don't even want to go this route? One, you can redesign the project and use a round tenon. I don't think that would hurt this at all. This is just part of the exercise and the challenge for me. Remember, I'm trying to challenge myself that includes doing some things that maybe in the long run weren't such a good idea. So redesigning the project to suit the tools you have is always an option. Square tenons are really pretty easy to file to make sure the shoulder is nice and square, so that's an option. We've looked at making monkey tools that have a punched hole and that are bent in this dog leg shape so that you don't have to drill a hole and you don't have to worry about the hollow. It'd be pretty easy to make a square one like this. They're a little awkward to use, but they do get the job done you can find something that already has an existing square hole in it. Most of us have a drawer full of these things, sockets. Some of them have half inch square holes in the backside, some three eighths, some quarter. Now I would probably find deep well impact sockets that aren't plated and are a little bit taller just to make your life easier. But you could easily take some sockets if you have extras and weld them onto a bar and this just becomes a finished monkey tool at that point. Another option would be to make a regular round monkey tool that has a hole large enough for the square tenon to fit into, then punch a piece, maybe half inch thick tool steel of some sort with a square hole and weld that over the end of the bar so that you've got a square surface for the tenon, but a round hole for the tenon to extend into. Lots of different options, lots of different approaches. These are just my ideas that I have at this point in time. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. If you'd like to see the video where I made this monkey tool, I'll link to it right down here. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, challenge yourself, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.